in grade six, when I was in grade seven or grade eight, uh, my teachers often told me that I had a lot of energy, uh, which was their nice way of saying that I talked too much in class. I don't worry about it. Um, but uh, energy is something I know something about because I do it on a daily basis. My job at MTV Canada, if you've ever seen any live television show, if the audience is having fun or having a good time, it's my job to get them excited before we actually go live on television. It's a really simple job, but also very difficult. Let me show you. People on the floor, make some noise! today because, uh, like I said, it's my bread and butter. It's something I know something about. But it's a very broad topic. So, uh, I only have 15 minutes with you today, which is not nearly enough to talk about energy, so I'm going to focus on one thing. Just one thing, and it's, it's right over here. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to bring it up up front. I'm going to put it right front and center. I'm going to put it right here. Whoa! Should be on a hockey stick. That bottle of water right there is all we're going to talk about today. 15 minutes. Stay with me. That doesn't sound very exciting, but stay with me. This bottle of water right here. This, uh, this little bad boy has been getting a bit of a bad rep lately. Uh, a lot of people want to boycott it. A lot of people want to stomp it out, get rid of it, take it off the shelves, take it out of stores, make it illegal. What? It's just, it's just, it's just a bottle of water, man. What's the problem? But seriously, we want to take this off the shelf and boycott them, make them illegal in the whole area of Toronto and then eventually Southern Ontario and hopefully the world. Now, why? Why would we make a bottle of water illegal? I don't understand. Well, I will say this. I, personally, will never, ever, hopefully, for the rest of my life, purchase a bottle of water for the rest of my life. This is the goal I'm setting for myself. Hopefully, I can do it. Allow me to explain. That bottle of water does not deserve the amount of energy it takes to make it. First of all, let's talk about the bottle itself. The very, the very bottle water is in. That bottle is made out of plastic, and of course, as you know, plastic has to be made out of stuff, and a lot of plastic is made out of oil. Believe it or not, it's actually true. Some plastic comes from oil. They modify it and do all kinds of crazy stuff to it, and they make it into these tiny little pellet balls, and thousands of these little balls get heated up and melted down and formed into, well, everything. Pretty much anything that is plastic comes from this process. In this particular case, it's formed into a transparent, clear plastic bottle, just like that. And inside that plastic is all kinds of swirly toxins just waiting to get out. And sometimes they actually sneak into the water you're drinking itself. Sometimes they do. Now, not only that, but it isn't even filled yet. There's a paper wrapper around the bottle itself. That is paper. You all know where paper comes from. Let's just recap, shall we? To get that trees. Thank you. Exactly. You know what you're doing. For God's sake, you know. So we have to send this big, massive machine that runs on gas into the forest. And you got to see these things. They're amazing. There's, a, there's this big clamp that goes around the tree, tied to a cable, and the cable goes wow. And it just breaks off all the branches and then slices the tree at the bottom and puts it into a big pile of other dead trees. And another big thing that also runs on gas, picks it up and puts it onto a truck. And that big truck drives away, also running on gas by the way, drives away to a big factory that's billowing smoke into the air and taking up all kinds of energy and it's mashing up and cutting up the tree making it into pulp, and of course the pulp gets squished and gets all mess messed up and put into a big uh, roll of paper. But the thing is, as you mentioned, they're made from trees, and therefore the paper isn't white, it's brown. Because why? Trees are brown, very good, this is exactly right. They are in fact brown, so we have to bleach it and use all this bleach, and that's toxic all into itself. And then once we have the big roll of paper, we ship it off to another factory over here, and the other factory cuts up all the paper into various things and puts the ink on it. And that ink comes from a different factory altogether. It is making ink way over here, and it's shipping the ink in, and it's printing on top of the, the label, and it gets put on there with two little dabs of glue. And the glue comes from a different factory somewhere over here, and that gets shipped in, and then it goes to glue, and it's on there. It's not even filled with water yet. In comes the water in this massive vat that's being distilled, boiled, so it's good for you and it's safe to drink, and then filtered sometimes five times, filtered in this massive filtering contraption, and then it's poured into each bottle, and it's not done yet. It's off to this little cardboard plank, about 12 of them, and then covered in plastic, and then a bunch of those get into a big box, and a forklift comes in, which runs on, thank you, lifts it up and puts it into another big truck, which is shipped off to a huge warehouse with 
fluorescent lights and everything else it uses all kinds of energy. And then a different truck, which also runs on, comes and picks up a whole bunch of them and drives them to a whole bunch of different stores. And that's where you come in. You walk up to the shelf, you pull off the bottle of water, throw away the top, glove, glove, gone. It's kind of a long process, wasn't it? <laughs> took a lot to get to you, didn't it? That, my friends, is why I no longer purchase any bottles of wine. Ever. <laughs> now, I know you're thinking, you're thinking, well, I'm safe. Dude, I have orange juice, so whatever. No big deal. I have apple juice. I drink Red Bull. I drink Powerade. Guess what? Guess what? You're not safe either. Because that whole big elaborate story I just told about the trees and the machine and the cable and the glue and the paper and all that stuff and the truck and the forklift and all the fluorescent lights and the fridges, all that stuff applies even more so to any beverage you buy. So, I know you're saying now, uh, excuse me, uh, Mr. Redhead, uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Just, just, uh, just like die of thirst? What am I? Uh, I gotta drink stuff, man, come on. Yeah, you do. I had the solution. Now, you probably didn't think you're gonna hear from a genius today. Oh, but you are. He's like, I'm gonna hear from the Kielbergers, he's amazing. I'm gonna hear from Severance, she's fantastic. I'm gonna hear a Kielberg band, I'm gonna have a good time. But I didn't think I would hear from a genius. Oh, watch yourself. Right over here. I have the answer. Check it out. A refillable bottle! Genius! Watch this, watch this. I can refill this at any tap on Earth. Oh, shoot! What? What? Is that even possible? Ah! Yeah! I did it today! And, oh, oh. For free, ridiculous. I used some mathematics today. I used some math. They told me how many people were going to be here. And I did a little bit of math. I sat down with the captain and I figured this out. Here's the thing. Now, I have decreed I am never going to buy a bottle of water again. I'm going to do my very, very best and never buy a bottle of water ever again. Here's the thing. Let's just say, hypothetically, everybody in this room buys one bottle of something a day. One a day. If all of you say to me now that you will never buy a bottle of water for one full year, if all of you make that vow today, right here, all in the same room, together, if we say this, and we do this for one year. Guess how many of these we're taking out of the landfill? Anybody want to do the math on this? 140,000 bottles out of the landfill, folks. 